I would like to welcome you all to this webinar about how to use writing to tell your story and group your professional career with uh, Anne Bruce and Sardit Love and myself. I will try to help in this because the, they are the better experts on this because they even have a book published together about this. So this um, this is a subject that they know much much more than I. I, I know something. I have, I have some books <laughs> published, but I'm not uh, as an expert as Anne and Sardik. So I I will help. So um, let me also take this opportunity to once again welcome you and um, present myself. I'm my name is Philippe Carrera. I'm from Portugal and I have been doing uh, some writing also and some uh, speaking across 50, more than 50 countries around the world. And I would like also to Anne and Sardik uh, to present themselves and I will leave uh, the first question to Sardik. But uh, let me tell you one thing, this is not another boring webinar where uh, you should be, as an audience, be shut up and say nothing. You're, we are here to hear your questions, and that makes it much more interesting because in that way we don't know where we will end up. So it will be fun uh, for us. It will be challenging because we will have to answer questions that we don't expect. And let's, let's have fun. It, it will be a fun hour. The, some of you have already uh, been in webinars that Sardik and I did together, and you know this, you are witnesses that we don't like to be boring. So Anne, can you um, tell a little bit about your story? Uh, I'm an author, and uh, I've written 24 books that have been published in 36 languages across the world. Um, I take writing very seriously and uh, publishing very seriously. And so I wanted to be part of this, Philippe. Thank you for the invitation and Sardik as well. Um, it's, this is how I make my living. I'm a writer and I write and ghost write books for other writers, actually. And um, it's, a, it's a wonderful profession. And yes, you can be paid. And yes, you can make a, a very good living as a writer if you do it correctly. So I'm very honored to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, and now it's your turn, Sardik. Who are you? So who is Sardik? Well, a lot of my friends... Sardik uh, is Dr. Love, don't forget. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, a lot of my friends call me Dr. Love, even though I'm not a real doctor. I just play one on Zoom. <laughs> and some of you already know that. I see Rachel smiling. She's, she's been around me and, and so have several of us. The short answer of who Sardik is, is I am a peak performance coach and a professional problem solver. So what I do is I help individuals, teams, and organizations achieve peak performance through a series of uh, systematic approaches that I have and my peak performance made simple methodology. And an author, obviously, with, with Anne, it was a great honor to do that with her. And, uh, you know, professional and international speaker and trainer. So that's who Sardik is. And, and a little bit crazy, nutty. That's why I hang out with you, Philippe. That's what ah, you do. Crazy. Of course. Uh, crazy people tend to get together. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's do this, right? Let's get, let's get uh, into this and find out what people want to know about, uh, about publishing and writing a book and all that. Yeah, because, because uh, again, you have a great opportunity to put questions to Anne that is, as, as you saw, a very good expert in publishing books, okay? I was very proud that I published like uh, five or six books in eight languages, and she is a little bit more, so now it's the opportunity. I will learn also, for sure. So I would ask you to raise your virtual hand uh, in order to put, to put questions. Um, because we like questions more um, by voice than these kind of written questions. Uh, Brian, is that a rising hand or only clapping? Because there is a, a tool for a rising hand. You know, I've never, in all the Zooms I've done, I could never find the darn raise, raise your hand. <laughs> participant. Sort of way. On the participant list, you will have an icon. That's, uh, that, that's good. That's, we, we, we can help 
uh, you will have a blue hand, like the blue man. There is a, I cannot see because I'm a host. I, I hope there is there, or there is it something is. that says race hand. It's, yeah, you find it, Brian. Did I find it? Okay, yes. good. <laughs> Can you, do you want to put to the Thanks, question? Well, yeah, you know, um, I've, I've read a number of Anne's books, although I have to acknowledge, embarrassingly, not all 24. Um, but I would say, I'm curious, Anne, there had to be both, knowing you, there had to be both a mission, I would say a mission purpose, a human purpose, and a business purpose to the strategy behind putting out your second edition of this book in partnership with Sardique. And I'm curious as to, um, I, I clearly have gaps that you two have a really robust professional relationship and friendship. But beyond that, the decision to take the second edition and bring a partner in, I'm just curious as to what all went into that. Well, um, the publisher had reached out to me three times. I, I was in the middle of other projects and I really didn't want to do a second edition because I didn't have the time. But I love the book and people will often hear me say, stay in love with your books. And I do. Um, and I decided the only way to do this would to, would, was to bring in a co-author that would help it go deep and wide, meaning help, you know, regenerate the book and make it current. And also, which is right here, <laughs> I'm a shameless promoter. You got to promote your book or, <laughs> or nothing happens. And, uh, I needed someone too who could write and, and that's Sardik, he's brilliant. I knew him, I'd heard him speak and he would be the other long arm of distribution for me. So while I was out there promoting, that was a strategy. I'm out there promoting it to my groups. He's in India or he's in Bangladesh or he's in Boston and he's promoting it too. But I needed a great writer and a reliable, honorable man or woman to work with. And I called him one Sunday night and we agreed to do it and we knocked that son of a gun out with the, our amazing editor, Phyllis Jask, um, made it possible. Without her, there would be no second edition. And so we got together and we knocked it out like in eight months, right, Sardi? It was like record time. Yeah, it was, it was kind of ridiculously fast. Yeah, and, fast. And, uh, and I will say this, uh, Brian and everybody else, you know, so this was my first book and, and, and one of the, concerns I had was I wasn't sure if I could write as proficiently as, as uh, Anne would want because she's obviously a very uh, expert writer. And what she did with me was she said, don't worry about that. I'm going to show you how to write and, and give you the, the methodology of how to, how to write the book. And I can just tell you from the very beginning, I think the first chapter that I wrote, it took me about seven, eight hours. And by the time we got towards the end of the writing process, I was writing and cranking out chapters in about two hours. But, and I just want to make sure because this is, it was an unusual situation because I, I don't want people listening to think you can write a chapter in three hours or seven hours. Sure. Um, you had a team around you. You had me and you I had did. Phillips and there was a structure and the book had already been published one time. I, I want to be really real because I, I really want to help people who want to write. And when you write a chapter in a book, it has taken me a short, if I'm really speeding along three or four days to write a chapter, but typically it can, it can take three weeks. I mean, so because it's, it's not like you're writing a postcard to your mom or your grandmother. I mean, it is, it takes research and it takes time and it takes proficient writing. And so I think the acceleration that you experienced, um, Sardik, was atypical and I just don't want people to think oh wow that's how fast a book goes because when I take on a client and write a book for them we're looking at you know nine months time to a year to get that book from beginning to end and it's not because I can't write quickly it's because um, you want it to sound intelligent and you know and I don't I mean, I am the team with the people I work with. So I just want to be real clear on that. And I think this is a good form to answer people's questions. The nitty gritty of writing. If you've got real nitty gritty questions regarding outlets, money, anything, this is the time to do it. I mean, because Sardik and I are here and Philippe, you know, you're an internationally known name. I think that's good. Can, can I make a question, actually? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I published my own books and... And sometimes they ask me to do like a chapter and I'm okay with that. But I never had the courage to ask somebody else 
to somebody to be my partner in crime, let's say, and do a book together. Um, what advices do you give? Because that, I think it's a, a kind of safer way to do a partnership and do a book as a partnership. Um, what advices you would give in order to maintain the relationship after the book? Because, for instance, I'm very compulsive. I'm, I'm, I'm very detail-oriented. I'm, I'm very okay. careful with everything. So if I'm connected with somebody that is like disorganized, I'm getting crazy. How you mean yeah, you, you have to find the right person. First of all, you got to remember, with Speak for a Living, the book had already been written. I'd already written the first edition. So that was alive and well. It's red. Ours is much prettier. I love our book so much more. And uh, so we had that done. Most people, if they go into a book that has not already been written, that was the other thing that gave us acceleration. Um, you're going to take much longer. So for instance, when I wrote Discover True North, which I highly recommend people get a copy of this book, that took me seven years to write. And I don't have a, a co-author, but it took seven full years to write that book. And so um, it just depends that when you reach out to someone, you want someone who can write, who um who supports you intellectually and emotionally. Sardik and I had become friends over the years. I believed in his work, told, I still do. I mean, I'm his biggest cheerleader. I mean, he is the best. And I yes, wanted I to- Yes, I am, I, I am. You really. are the best. And That's I wanted, me. Okay. and for I'm me- the best version of this is- I'm the best <laughs> version. <laughs> and I wanted yin and yang. I wanted yin and yang. I wanted a guy and me or, you know, perfect, so that we could balance each other. He could speak to audiences in a dynamic that was different from me. And we had an international and domestic infusion of our work. Um, and I think from that, we've learned from each other and a great friendship. And was let me jump in there and, and, and just throw in a, a little question, like a follow up to Philippe, because how did you know that I could write? <laughs> I didn't. I, it was the conversation that Sunday night. And I asked you, if you recall, I asked you to send me a sample of something mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. So I didn't make any decisions until I saw a sample of your writing because, and here's just segueing to people getting book deals. If you want to kill a book deal, then write a book. Write a book and you will kill your opportunity to get a publisher. And so people say, well, what the heck does that mean? Well, it means that every publisher out there says very clearly, do not send us a book, folks. Send us a very in-depth proposal of your book. Philippe, you referred to it when you talked about having your sample chapter. Um, the specifications for every publisher are on the internet. This is not like a best kept secret or some private club. And what happens is authors give publishers exactly what they don't want. And then they sit there going, <laughs> you know, why didn't they get my book accepted? Well, because you didn't give people what they asked for. So the key is do a proposal first. And if you have to hire someone, like I've got two clients right now who've hired me to write their proposals um, because it is an art form. And you are in competition with hundreds of people trying to get that publisher's ear. So you need to have a great proposal. But if you write the book and you tell a publisher you have a completed book, I'm telling you right now, thumbs down, deal's done. It's off. Okay. Um, Rachel is raising her virtual hand for a long time. Hi, Rachel. Uh, so, uh, Rachel, Hi. please. Yeah. Um, so my question actually kind of goes along with the end of your sentence, even though it had been raised for a while. If, if that's something they want, those proposals, yes, people could hire you to do that. But what kind of methodology resources or resources for building your own proposal are out there? If those are the right steps, that, not if, those are the right steps, how do we find those resources if we're not at a place where hiring someone as wonderful as you is in a budget? Uh, well, Rachel, that's a great question. And that's a con I love that kind of common sense approach. I often thought that way in the beginning years too. The greatest resource you have is the internet. So if you, now with it's being, it's difficult obviously to go into bookstores, but they're opening again. And so you think about what is your genre? Um, who is your audience? And who publishes that type of book? 
So you don't have to go to Barnes and Noble to see that. You can certainly do it on Amazon or any anywhere on the internet. Find out who those publishers publishers are. Is it Fireside? Is it Simon & Schuster? Is it Josie Bass? Is it McGraw Hill? You know, I'm talking big publishers now. And then go to their website and search uh, author submission. And in the author submission part, it will list every detail of what they are looking for. And also they'll say how many books they're publishing this year, et cetera. They'll give you everything you need. Then you start the research. I think Rachel's point's excellent that there's a lot of research. And what I find that is disappointing for me is everybody does a lot of talking about writing a book. No one wants to do the work. <laughs> there is so much work. <laughs> you've got to do the research and, and all that. So you've got now your submission uh, specifications. Now you begin doing research and um, you begin the writing process. And that means in that proposal, you, the most important thing isn't your sa sample chapter, because you're going to rewrite it anyway. So forget the sample chapter. It's going to be in there. The most important thing is how are you going to sell this book? Who's going to buy the book? And why is it relevant? And then you get the ear. And then if you're fortunate enough to know someone who can give you a leg up and get, help you get in a door, you're fortunate. But it doesn't exist most of the time. But if you're really good, publishers are looking for people like you, Rachel, who are thinking that way and ready to write something they can buy. So, I mean, you've got my total support. Thank you. Okay. Um, and about the process, okay? Um, I, I wrote some books and I have, I, I have this process. I don't it's my process. I use, I use a tool called mind mapping to prepare the book. So, because normally you don't have time. Uh, it's, it's not like in the movies that you go into the woods for one month or to a lake and you write a book after that month. Uh, so you have like bits and bytes to, to work on books. So I, I like to use a tool like mind mapping. So, I do a little bit one day, a little bit another day, but I don't need to reread the what I have uh, written in order to understand in what part I am. Do, what techniques do you use in terms of, uh, or do you advise for uh, some rookie uh, writers? For me, it's I, I think the mind mapping works great, especially in the beginning books or beginning stages of your writing career. I think that is a very foundational tool. So I think that's great, Philippe, you do that. For me, it's chunking down. I use the Tony Robbins method. I chunk down everything. The hardest part of any book I write is the first sentence and the last sentence. And say, so, oh, just a sentence, you know, you've got 200 pages. Well, the first sentence and the last sentence set the tone. And that's the hardest thing to write. And I chunk it down First, I look, I step back from the book. So say, you know, I've got Discover True North. This is a pretty sizable book. It's four parts. It's got, you know, hundreds of pages and lots of chapters. It's overwhelming if you try to eat that whale whole. But if I could just look at the parts first, stand back, then from the parts, extrapolate the chapters I wanted to include. Now what I've just done automatically is create a table of contents. From that table of contents, you develop an outline. Once you have the outline, you've got meat on the bones. As my awesome, beautiful friend Phyllis Jass says, you've got meat on the bones. And then you begin one baby chunk at a time. As you said, Philippe, you're right. You grab those moments when you can write and start putting it together. And sometimes it comes together quickly, as it did with Sardik and I. In eight months, we were done. That is lightning speed. Or it comes together in the, the, the typical length of time is about a year and a half to two years. So, and people always make me laugh when they say, well, that's why I self-publish because I didn't have to wait for a publisher for two years. Meanwhile, they're self-publishing and it's taken them six years. I, <laughs> see, we play those mind games because people don't feel they, they don't have the confidence or they feel like they, 
you know, they need an excuse for not doing it. They've already told their entire family and all their friends are going to write a book. So they have to come up with something. And it's a, it's a psychological game. And I love the mind mapping. So I support you on that. Great. That's a great idea, Philippe. Oh, it's uh, for me, it's like a lifesaver because the first thing that I do is a huge mind mapping. So I, I the first the first book that I that I wrote, it took me like two years, but it was uh, the, the, the experience was like this. Um, it was about digital marketing. So every time that I thought the book is completed, another new thing would appear. So I go, ah, OK, so I would have to re uh, rephrase it, uh, um, do some update and things like that. So it was some, at some point I said, okay, it goes to the publisher. I don't, I don't care. But it, but, <laughs> but it took it, like, I, I did these bits and bits and bits. I was writing the book in airports, in Starbucks, in uh, wherever I could, I was writing bits and bytes. So right. it, I think because sometimes uh, I think people have this fear that when they think, okay, I will write a book, I don't know, probably 200 pages, 150 pages, something like that. And it's an elephant and it's a huge elephant. So if you cut the elephant in small bits, uh, it's different. <laughs> it's right. And, and I just want to say to you just that there are different kinds of books. Right now, there are like grab and go books. They're really, I've done a series of those for lots of clients. So they're smaller. They're not the trim size of a standard book. So the book you're referring to is called a publisher's standard size. And um, it's a tr called trade size, about five by seven, approximately 185 pages, whatever. But there are lots of other pages. Discover True North is not a trim size. It's an oversize. But the lots of the little grab and go books are great. And you can do a series of those. Um, and those are good too. So it just depends on the type of book. But most of all, I really encourage people, what do you want to write? And who is going to buy this book and read it? And I can't believe how many people I speak to can't answer those questions. You need to know who that audience is going to be. Who's going to buy it? Because, you know, you can write the greatest book in the world, but if no one buys it or reads it, what does it matter? Um, so, and, and, and if I can jump in on that one piece right there, mm -hmm. that's a particularly important point for all of you who are speakers and trainers who want to write a book. If you're in the speaker trainer space, and a lot of speakers and trainers actually, especially if they're in corporate and they the desire or they move into the independent or freelance or self-employed side, one of the biggest challenges that they have in their business, which then translates as an exponentially bigger problem in, term of, in terms of trying to write a book, is they don't know who their actual target audience is. So I really wanted to just kind of jump in there and reinforce that point because the publisher, like Ann said, they're going to want to know who's the book for. They're looking at sales. They, the, your concept is great and all that, but the reality is they're thinking about, okay, can we sell it? How, can, how many sales can we generate from this thing? And you've got to have a very clearly defined target audience. So just, and I love it when people ask me, so, you know, I want to write this book on centipedes that, you know, consume gasoline. And I'm like, <laughs> who's going to buy that book? <laughs> Right? Non-ecological non centipedes. Just saying. So I'm sorry, Anna, just wanted to throw that no, in. No, I love your point. point. I think you've driven that home beautifully. I love your point. And, you know, my thing, I just really want to encourage people to write. Every, but people should write, and um, there's lots of ways to make money. You don't just have to write a book. I mean, before I wrote books, I wrote tons of magazine articles and online articles and was paid for those. I, I noticed today most people don't want to put that, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. I want to write a book. Well, I didn't just jump to writing a book. I wrote lots of articles for magazines and newspapers and sold those publicly and sharpened my saw. So then I became better and better. I mean, I don't think you just wake up an author. I really practice this. I've written every day of my life since I was six years old. I mean, for the most part, with the exception of, you know, certain, maybe certain hard times, you know, where someone is ill and you're caring for them. But otherwise, um, you, you've got to practice and the way to practice. Oh, and the best book you can buy, I just want to throw this out there for anyone who's really serious, um, is a book by Stephen King. And I am, I am not a fan of his genre. I don't read that genre. 
but I'm a fan of him. And he wrote a book called Stephen King on Writing. It's tiny, tiny little book. It's in my it's in my other office, and I should have um, had that here, but it's called Stephen King on Writing. It's a tiny little book, and it's great. He just nails it. Here is exactly what to do, um, and do it, and that's it. He doesn't, like, he doesn't dance around, or he's very direct, and I have found that to be a really good resource. I love the book. Why don't we for a second, uh, Philippe, as, as you're looking to see if anyone has their hands up, let's just briefly talk about, and then we'll come back to questions. Uh, what are some of the real key benefits? And let's keep this real short. What are the real benefits to writing, getting published as an author? So I'll, I'll give it to you all, and then whatever you all don't say that I had in my head, I'll, I'll throw out. But And there's some obvious ones. What, what would you all say, Philippe? And, and I see Rita. Hi, Rita. Hi, Rita. And she's an, Rita's an author. What are the benefits, Rita, to being an author and writing? So, uh, so many, but it, first of all, boosts your confidence and it gives you credibility and it gives you the opportunity to increase your rates and it makes you an expert in your field, whatever it is you're talking about. And it goes on and on and on. I mean, it's, it's like the, a calling card on steroids <laughs> it gets you speaking opportunities um and it uh it sort of anchors you as that expert in whatever it is you're talking about and people really believe if you've written a book just that in and of itself you know people go wow because most people will never do it just like speaking most people will never do it you know so you're like a superhero when you when you do it and so it's well worth it i've uh, I'm here today because it's time that I do another one. It's been many, many years since mine, and I've had lots of benefits from it. So, um, I know. Your book's great. Tell me the name of it again. It was Destination Profit. Yes, Destination, Destination, Profit. Destination Profit. I have that on my bookshelf, I know, in the bedroom. And But see, it doesn't – you stayed in love with the book. You keep – I mean – there's, it just depends. Some book, Look at Discover True North. That thing is chugged and chugged and chugged, but it remains relevant. I've – stayed in love with it. I keep promoting it. So it's not, you know, used to be, oh, two years, your time was up. It was out of print and that was over, but, but it just depends. You can keep it going. Yeah. I mean, so congratulations to you on that. I mean, I think it's, it's awesome. Do you have another book in the works? Probably by mind. I have lots, but <laughs> it's a matter of what that is. So, you know, I think, uh, we can just sit down and write about anything, but I really do think that it has to be something that you're passionate about. Uh, and that is going to hopefully make a difference. And at this point in my life, whatever that next one is, it's got to reflect kind of the legacy, you know, that I want yeah. for yeah. myself. Right. And to put out I love that. So. I love and, that. I love that. Yeah. Well, you are such an inspiration, Anne. I mean, and I know I follow you all the time and watch you <laughs> and see you. And I, you know, we have so many memories that we can't even talk about on this call. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. And, and, and you all should know when I was writing my very first book, I mean, Rita was a cheerleader. Rita, Rita supported me. Rita was my cheerleader. She believed in me. And then I moved back to California and then we kind of came back together and then she was an author. So, you know, it's a wonderful journey. It's a wonderful journey. Um, I'm writing Discover True North Relationships now. So when Rita was talking about having your passion for that, I'm having so much fun. I don't, I just want to write something really juicy and say stuff that people think but won't say and shock people. And then if I die, I die. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Ann, I'm, 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 I want to stop you for a second, Ann, because, because what, <laughs> You, you didn't yeah. follow my, look, I'm going to say this publicly. You didn't follow my hint on this question that I had. So what I wanted to do, and I'm going to be very explicit and transparent here. Oh. The reason okay. I asked the question, what's the benefit of writing the book? And thank you, Rita, because you set it up purposely and just started talking. And I'm like, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I love shut it. Because I want to tell you something. What? I want to edify Anne here. So just to give you a proof point. And, and this is not about me. I'm going to give you two different simple examples. When Rita said it helps you establish yourself as, a, as an expert, no doubt. Number two, it helps you generate massive increases in fees. So let me give you one book writer who has blown up. If you haven't read his book, you should get it. Atomic Habits by James Clear. Now, James Clear wrote this one book. That's his first book. Before he wrote that book, he 
was a blogger and he had written many blogs. I think he wrote three, a blog a day for three years or something. So he perfected his writing skills. So by the time he wrote Atomic Habits, this thing went to a bestseller and the first book he sold and since it's come out about, I think it was 1.3 million copies. You want to talk about this guy on every talk show, everything. So that's just Who's one celebrity. Publisher? Who's this publisher? That I don't remember off the top of my head. I can grab his book here in a second. No, just but, curious. I was just curious. Yeah. So one thing about writing is, is, is it works massively if you do it right. Now, I'm going to give you my personal experience. All I will say to you is before I had written this book with Anne, and I can tell you, you know, that book came out in October of 2018. So here we are, uh, you know, two years later, just about. We're coming up on two years later. In that two-year period, I have doubled my speaker fees. What else do you need to know about writing a book? Good point. Good point. Okay. So I just wanted to throw that in there so that when you all are thinking about writing a book, regardless of whether you're internal or external, the benefits are huge and you get that instant credibility that Rita talked about because people, and I know Ann used to tell me all the time, people will look at you differently. And, and I never really understood what that meant until I was on a flight. I was going to uh, India actually, and I was on, on Qatar Airways and I had the book you know, I was flying in business class and, and I, I had the book and I, I was taking, it's just proud of the book. So I had the book there in the cabin there and the flight attendant came by and she said, uh, it's cause she knew my name. She's like, Oh, is that your book? And I said, yes. And she was like, I didn't know that I was amongst celebrities. <laughs> yeah. Looking at you and I was just like, Nobody okay. Would say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like, what? So I'm, I'm just saying, if, if you got a book in you, and we all do, like Rita said, she's got, we all have more than one book, write the darn book. Write Rita, the can book. we have one thing? Because uh, in my past uh, few years, I've helped like six people get published, mm -hmm. working with kind of an indie publisher and, and giving them tips and lessons learned and all of that. Uh, and I will say this, and Anne alluded to this earlier, that if nobody knows about you and nobody knows you have a book, it doesn't matter. And what I have found in working with those five people is they are very passionate about what they're writing about. They really, they have this book and they took the time to do it, but you have to start the marketing effort when you start writing, if not before, because yes. that's much harder than writing the book itself. It is. And you are a dot on Amazon, you're dot. You know, and it's like, if you're not already some big name or you don't have a title that's really relevant right now, you're not going to get found. And so I, some, several of those people I work with, they have three and 4,000 books sitting in their garage that are, that yes. never go. and it was because they weren't willing to do the work. You have to do the work. This is not an easy, like, just go write a book. And writing it is not as hard because you can have editors and you can have people who polish it. But getting that message out, publishers are not going to work with you if you don't already have a platform. You're not willing to get out there and speak or talk or promote or do that. And that's much harder to me than writing the book. So that's all I got. Okay, well, say. and I love that because you've got to market, um, I, you know, you've got to be consistent to tie in with what Rita's saying really consistent. I do something called 30 seconds on the beach in my social media and perspectives from a spirit junkie. I am consistent. I'm not taking pictures, spaghetti and meatballs. I'm not playing with the cat on a Sunday. I'm not, I am consistently, that doesn't mean once in a while, do, do something really fun, fly a kite at the park, whatever. That's always fun. But for the most part, my publisher will say, dang, you know, you are straight down the line with consistency and Rita brought that up because the marketing, um, I'm going to be starting an imprint publishing company here very soon. I've already got a backing for it and I've already got large publishers who are involved with me to collaborate. And our, our whole thing is going to be that, the writing that Rita said and Sardik mentioned, but also with a huge marketing component that allows you to consistently market that book. Cause like Rita said, you'll have 3000 books sitting in your garage in a box and that's not going to do you a whole bunch of good in any way, shape or form. You think, Oh, well, if I speak, I'll give them away. It, it doesn't happen that way. There's a whole bunch of things that have to align. So I love your point, Rita. It's excellent. In, uh, so, in any case, you have many, many Christmas salt. Yes. In terms of gifts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you yeah. go. All right, so um, who has a question out there, Philippe? 
And I, I, I want to, to share a little bit because you were talking in a US perspective and people might think, okay, that's okay in the US, it worked like this. But let me give you my story also. Um, my first book, uh, it was about digital marketing and opened the door for me to be uh, uh, since then, so back in 2009, um, a professor in this area of digital marketing and the coordinator of the biggest postgraduate course in Portugal uh, that there is in digital marketing. So it's, we have been uh, leading the market for the last 10 years and it was because of that book. Uh, let's say that the revenue that I got from the book is a very small part of the revenue that I got because I had the book. And let me tell you two funny stories about, about the book is that when I was writing the book, I was always like very proud and I was doing my marketing saying, like you were saying, like Rita was saying, um, oh, uh, I'm writing a book and people would say, about what? And I would say, oh, uh, digital marketing. And people would say, ah, that's interesting. And I got a little bit frustrated. So, because it was not like um, interesting, okay? So I would, uh, people are, are asking, so what were you, uh, what are you writing about? And I would say, uh, it's an erotic novel. And people would say, oh, tell me about it. <laughs> so, but, and I would say, no, it's about digital marketing. and. It was a way of getting in the memory of people. And after writing a book, uh, the thing is that um, I would say, okay, I have, uh, I disappear in terms of image. I don't know why. Oh, interesting. My camera reinitiated. <laughs> oh, now I have another camera, sorry. Um, and I would say I wrote a book. In, and uh, after my second book, I start saying I wrote several books about the subject so it's different <laughs> you can say several books so that those were the 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 very short uh, notes that i wanted to 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 share um with you but um any any and any other advices because no uh, we have no more questions from the audience but i'm looking to facebook live so it can come from yeah. facebook live questions can come from if you don't want to to say it out loud, you can write it on the on the chat. And by the way, um, people are writing on the on the chat. And I put the book that Anne refers and Phils, uh, Phyllis Phyllis um, uh, put the book, the Atomic Habits. So you have it on the the chat okay. area. So uh, Just any right, other? Dan and right. I, I think that my my main advice is always. Stop talking, start, start writing. Um, people want to talk a lot about their idea or their opinion or their book. And that's wonderful because you, you have to process that. But sit down and write. Um, you don't have to go to 10 million workshops. You don't have to take a lot of classes. You don't have to, you just sit down and write and start getting it out of you. And then you'll be very surprised what will happen. The transformation happens, and, and maybe Rita, maybe Sardik, this happened to you too. Um, you, you get to a point where the writing doesn't necessarily come from you as much as it does come through you. I, I've had that experience. And it's if it's difficult, you shouldn't be doing it. It should really flow. It doesn't mean it's not, you don't have difficulty. I'll stop writing then. And then all of a sudden, it'll kind of filter down. So just write, stop talking, start writing. That would be my best advice. Yeah, procrastination is the, the worst on book writing. Uh, Rachel has another question. So thank you, Rachel, for, for being so active. No one else will ask a question, I will. Um, yeah. My question is, <laughs> um, you know, when you're first starting and you're writing a book, most times people also are um, doing something like I have a full-time job, what do you suggest for time management or keeping away the procrastination side of it? Um, as Felipe said, how do you suggest or what tactics really worked for you to make that work better if you were doing something else at the time? I think that is a brilliant oh. question because many of us, oh, I'm sorry, uh, go ahead, ask, go ahead and answer. Is somebody going to speak first? I just think it's really, um, 
we all have families and children or grandchildren or lives and jobs and speeches or whatever. And so, yeah, you just can't say, hey, you know, I'm just going to go write my book and I'll see you later. I mean, that doesn't happen that way. Um, figure out first when is the best time for you to write. Many people will say, oh, you should write four pages every single day at seven in the morning, every morning, and that'll get you in. I don't subscribe to any of that. I am worthless at seven in the morning and there's no way I would write anything at seven in the morning. And so for me, my writing time is much later than that. I kind of know when my time is. So I look for those opportunities. And um, I also am a writer who I can't have music on. I can't have any distraction of any kind. I can't have music or any of that. Um, I'm really totally focused. And I don't write. They say, oh, you should only write for a certain amount of time and then take a break and do this. I'm very much dive in and go and go and go and go. For me, that's my momentum and how I kind of gauge, you know, my traction. So for you, you may say, you know, you find what's right for you, Rachel. You find the time of day and the way you like to write. Maybe it's when your kids go to bed or maybe when um, your husband goes to work and you take 30 minutes. Maybe it's late at night, not early. I don't know. Figure out when it's best and then just carve out what you can for you. And so can I jump in there as well, Anne? Yeah. So Rachel, what we, one of the things that helped with me was obviously having a deadline. So you have deadlines now. We had a publisher deadline. So that's, that, that's already there. But that doesn't mean that you can impose a deadline on yourself and just say, hey, if I'm going to, you know, you do the, here's a great book. If you want to figure out how to write a book, you can take this book and it'll tell you how to do it. And the book is called The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. And what that one thing is, is the book is about basically taking a big goal, like writing a book and chunking, you heard Ann talk about chunking it down. So you start out, what, you know, if I want to write a book in a year, then what do I need to do over the next 12 months? What do I need to do every month? What do I need to do every week? What do I need to do every day? You know, that kind of thing. So you break it down until you break it down into smaller chunks. And the one thing actually is a great book for how to do that. So I would offer that as an option for you. If you don't have a publisher to drive the deadlines, use that concept. And as Ann said, find the time of day that works for you and then commit to, and this is just like everything else, is a commitment to writing and writing to a certain amount or goal or whatever you're, you structure it as. But if you do the one thing and work backwards, reverse engineer it, you'll figure it out. By the way, uh, publish, publisher or self-publishing, what do you think? What is better? Um, did you want me to respond to that? Yeah, I think self-publishing's gotten a huge credibility um, boost in the past five years. And the indie publishing that Rita talked about, indie bookstores have become really cool. I mean, New York and LA, lots of indie, Santa Barbara, indie bookstores are great. Um, hybrid publishing is also very popular and where you collaborate, that's what I do. I collaborate with large publishers and then you have, but indie is great. You know, Martha Beck was sort of the, uh, somebody I watched cause she had all these awesome books. In fact, we were writing discover true North and find your true North at the same time. So that was kind of a joke with what was going on with us, but she decided to break away from her publisher and do her novels independently. And everyone was, are you crazy? You know, you're like, a, you sell millions of copies of articles. And she did break away and did indie, like you've suggested, Philippe. And uh, it worked out very well for her. So there's a lot of credibility provided it's done correctly. So this is why I have been... Um, I will tell you, people send me copies of their books or work, whatever. It hurts my teeth because I look at it and it's like, whoa, this looks like something that is really homemade. You don't want it to be homemade. If it's indie, you want to say, oh my gosh, I bet McGraw-Hill or Simon & Schuster or Fireside or Josie Bass pu published this. You don't want to say, oh yeah, this was done, you know, in the backyard last Tuesday frying hamburgers. I mean, you don't want to think that. You want to say, this is really a great piece of work. So... That would be my suggestion, and I'm all for it. Anybody who wants to write, I am your cheerleader. Send me my uniform. Send me whatever. I, I cheer on anyone who wants to write. I think it, and indie is awesome. Yeah. 
Can I comment one little thing to back to Rachel? Um, it was interesting for us because that publisher deadline definitely does matter. And at the time that we published, uh, we had six months to write the book because the catalog was coming out and they said, and we were like, oh, I didn't need to do this in six months because everybody had said it's going to take a minimal a year, you know, and, 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 and what they said is you just start writing. Like Ann said, you just start writing and you send us the chapters as they're finished and we will start the editing and just keep writing and feeding us the material. And that we ended up with double the amount of content that we needed and they edited it down. But there, are, having worked with several people, everyone has a different style to your point of, you know, we have busy lives and how do you do this? I have one friend, she wrote six books and she, uh, she, walk, she lives in Galveston, so she just walked along the beach and she record, you know, so her thoughts would come as she was walking. And so she would just record it and then she'd have it translated. So if you're someone, I had a difficult time sitting down writing because I'm a speaker first and I love talking. So I could talk a book before I sit down and write a book. But uh, because of the deadline and because uh, I actually wrote the book with a co author and he was in New York and I was in Dallas. So we had a lot of coordination to do. And the fact that my Henry quarantined me in my office here at home and said, you can't come out other than to eat and go to the bathroom. You have to finish it and meet your deadline. So whatever discipline I didn't have, he had for me. So <laughs> that helps to be, if you can't be accountable for yourself, because I'd rather go like, you know, do the laundry or something rather than sit down and write, uh, have somebody else who's, you have to have a support system. You know, if your family is constantly pulling on you and they're not supporting you, that's going to be a distraction. And there are people who've taken 10 years to write a book, and that's okay. And then there are people who, you know, in a weekend can write a book. So there is, the time is based on your time frame, and if you're working with a traditional publisher, their time frame, so. Great advice. That's great advice. And can I add something as well, Ham? Hey, Phyllis. Hi, everybody. Awesome, um, awesome editor, writer. She is brilliant, a great friend, and she is somebody who has great ideas. What's your question? Thank you. Actually, it was more of a comment. Um, the uh, the question between you know which is best uh, traditional publishing or indie publishing um you know there are pros and cons to each of them but um you know and sardique and I, we we do a fair amount of independent type publishing um getting a support team versus one provided by your publisher so your publisher has cover designers interior designers printers editors development managers like all of these um you know, writing experts on staff to help you shine. Whereas when you're an independent author, it's you and it's up to you to find a support network that's going to help you shine. So I'll, I'll mute from here off and you guys can talk. Um, by the way, um, on that, uh, Amazon has a very good program on that that help you if you are going independently. Uh, so it, it works very well. Actually, it's it's something uh, quite amazing because they they can print book by book so you might be selling a book in japan and uh, the person that is buying the book will have no delivery cost and it will see your book in yens in japanese currency and uh, it will be delivered the next day or something like that because it was printed the day before <laughs> and it will be uh, one copy per uh, per per printing, so it's it's a, it's an amazing an amazing uh, way. So now there are some alternatives, uh, but so um, we are we are in the last ten minutes. So if you have questions, uh, please put it now because it's this is like in the weddings. Uh, talk now or for forever hold your peace. So, um, and what, what golden advice you would say to, to really kick off with, uh, with, uh, with uh, writing? Uh, something that uh, can change us from uh, not writing anything to, okay, this, this really is something that I can do. Because there is this can idea, can, uh, kind of idea, sorry, 
English is my third language, so sometimes I have some problems. And what, what can we do in order to really kick off a book? And because, like I was saying, people have this idea that uh, the people that write books are so, so special. Of course, you are very special, Anne. But, but when we write our first, we think, okay, this is not so complicated. What, what can you advise? Get help. If there's, if you can bring people around you, a team of people who um, inspire you and help you, um, you know, I've immersed myself in the publishing world because the, the people I know help me greatly. They, we speak the same language and in all of the weaknesses and challenges I have, they support um, and make up for that. So surround yourself with people who can help you not make as many mistakes as I've made along the way. I made plenty of them uh, in the beginning years and I hope I've learned from those. And I love, you know, if you can get an author coach, it's great. I mean, I love coaching my authors and helping them get to, like you said, that international influence or, a hardback or maybe it's a memoir maybe it's a novel maybe it's a, a non-fiction or maybe it's a fantasy work or um, maybe it's a, a you know romantic novel it could be a, a million different things um, the main thing is work with someone who can help you find your voice lots of times people who offer up assistance are eager to take your work and translate it to what their opinion of that genre is helps if someone takes time to listen to your voice find your voice and help you translate it to the book uh, i think you've hit on gold that's one idea uh, you were talking and i was thinking about something that about the people that surround uh, surround you is that it's very funny that uh, one thing I learned is that uh, colleagues, friends, and family buy the book, but normally they don't read it because they know you already. And you get much more feedback from people that are not f family, friends, and colleagues than, <laughs> than you get from, friend, from this group. Because it's like, they like to say, oh, yeah, um, he, uh, the, pointing to the book, he's a colleague of mine, or he's my nephew, or whatever. But they don't read it. So it's something frustrating that don't, don't, I don't know if you have the same experience, but I have this experience that um, I have a lot of feedback from people that I've never met in my life, but I have zero feedback from family, friends, and colleagues. So, yeah, that, isn't that the truth? And they take your fan, you know, people say they think their family and friends are going to buy all their books. And it's kind of a harsh reality that that's not necessarily the case. And I'd come off the speaking circuit after speaking on Discover True North or whatever. And I used to joke with uh, my husband who's passed away now, but I'd come in and a big box from McGraw Hill would come in and um, it have my new book in it. And and David would have it watching a game, using it as a coaster for like a cold beer. And I'd say, well, you know, this is my book. Well, how can you be doing this? But this is, um, you know, fa your family, your, my, you know, my, my daughter doesn't, and they don't, she grew up with me speaking and writing and so forth. So, so do it for yourself. Um, you become what you anticipate and you become how you see yourself. So like in my office now, if you look right there, there's my writer's sign. I write every day under that sign. Um, there's no two ways about it. I am a writer, but uh, I have to remind myself every single day to be honorable to the writing profession and to make my living at this writing profession and to support my fellow writers. Um, and so that is my mantra and that works for me. And I think everyone finds their own way. Well, five minutes to go and the last question, Sardik. Well, I'll throw out a, 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 just a quick comment and then uh, maybe a question will come up while uh, we close out. So if you've got a question, think about it. One of the other benefits that we didn't talk about about writing a book is, I'll throw this out, press coverage. So you can get radio coverage, you can get radio interviews, television interviews. Uh, I've been interviewed by several podcasters because of the book and associated things that I've done outside of the book. And, you know, and of course, uh, it's easier to get an, an article published in a magazine if you're a published author. 
So again, I, this is just my closing statements to get you to think about if you got that book in you, go ahead and, and write it. And, you know, but start out from that premise as, as we all talked about already, who's the book for? And solve some problem for everybody, you know, because that's the whole point of the book is to, to share a system, a process, a methodology, or an inspirational story to, to get people to move forward in their lives. And, you know, so if you take the book as a, as a servitude kind of thing, you can help people and other people, the, the world will stand up and notice. So if there's a quick question, we got the, about three minutes that we can answer it. Anybody got a last question to take us home before we and close I see out? Anita's on here with us. I want to just point out, she's, hey, mwah, big hugs to you. Anita has written so many awesome bodies of work and she is very consistent with her social media. And um, I have learned, I, I take notes off of your social media, Anita. I sit here and write notes. Uh, and I, I love the inspiration and the thoughtfulness. And the, there's this heavy psychology aspect of what you present. I love it. ties in with business. So anyway, I just want to bring up Anita Willis. I think her social media is awesome and her writings are quite beautiful. So um, this is the, your, your last chance. And it, this is kind of like kind of the, in the auctions. It, uh, it goes one, two, three, and it's it's done. So, okay. from so, my side, it was a fun experience. Um, I had the opportunity to learn a lot uh, with Anne, Sardik, Rita, and Rachel, and that that share also their thoughts here. It's this kind of webinars is what uh, Sardika and I like to do. So probably you will hear from us uh, in the near future. And if you want to pop in, please come. We, we guarantee that it will be fun and we will be here to answer uh, the questions that you have. Uh, we had a very special appearance by Anne. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge. Uh, it was it was uh, our priv privilege. Phyllis is asking a last 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 question. Do you want to ask, or is yeah. uh, you ask raise your hand uh, by mistake because I don't see your image, so I don't know. Uh, Phyllis, do you want to? No, no, no last question. Just thank you, Philippe uh -huh. and Sardik and Anne for hosting this today. This has been awesome. Oh, thank you. Well, and thank you, thank you, Philippe. It's good, good to know you. It's the first time I've had a chance to meet you. You're awesome. I love your social media. Uh, Sardik, you're like my brother. I love you. I appreciate everything you have done for me. And he came to my house and I made him brisket, and he was like shocked out of his mind that this Italian girl from New York was going to Rita. Make <laughs> this one here can make a brisket. She caught me off guard because you know brisket. Send me your recipe. You know brisket. And she made a brisket. And I was, I put the thing in my mouth. I was like, this is good. <laughs> you thought you were going to get all lasagna. That's all I do is make lasagna. <laughs> She's legit. Her everything she knows. <laughs> she Damn. has. She has. Absolutely. This is my mentor right here. Yeah. And so just. It's wonderful, and uh, and anyone who has is interested, just the marketing part, I hope you follow me on social media, 30 Seconds at the Beach, follow me on all my social media, and if you're interested in doing a book, DM me or email me, and I will, um, I am going to be doing interviews next week to determine the first six authors we put into this new imprint we're developing. So um, get a hold right of there. me. Gonna market myself. Anita, Anita is asking, uh, let's say, yeah. the last moment uh, uh, question. Anita. I, you know, I just wanted to just uh, make a comment and say, uh, definitely, I have been inspired by both Sadiq and uh, Anne. Uh, they have been my cyber uh, mentors for almost the last year for Speak for a Living, and uh, I saw immediate results. And I'm looking forward to growing as a writer with Anne. So it's an exciting time. And, and they're good. They're better than good. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Thank, thank you, me. Anita, for thank sharing you. that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Guys, thank you very much. Right. I hope it was Pleasure. a useful hour for you. It was for me, for sure. And see you again somewhere yeah. in cyberspace. Indeed. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Bye, thank Bye you. everyone. Love you all. Bye.